What's up guys? So today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the nested if function in your Airtable database. And this is going to be really useful if you want to learn how to use functions as well as like you maybe use this in like a sales pipeline or a CRM or whatever that looks like for you. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we help business owners optimize their information systems with like Asana, Slack, Airtable, and many other systems. So if you're curious about that, check out the link in the description and click subscribe and the notification bell so you get more Airtable tutorials just like this one. Without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. All right, so as you can see here, we have our Airtable database pulled up, and this is actually gonna be that sales CRM that I just talked about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be giving a few conditional values based on what the status here is here. So we basically just wanna filter out the ones that are closed and then find out which ones that are not closed and give them a specific value. So this is really gonna be dependent on however you wanna apply it for your situation, but we're gonna say, that this status here is what we're gonna use for the values in our if function. So I want to insert one right here and keep in mind you could also, since you're using multiple if functions and always you can use like the and and the or function in that, that first operator to reference other fields rather than just one field. But to keep this simple enough, I'm just gonna reference this one field here as status. So for this, I always like to come in here and click and see what my operators are gonna be. So for this example, it's gonna be if a logical value and then the value of true and then the value of false. So if this logical value is true, we want a certain value. So to find out if that's true, we need to determine what is true because you want to have something that's going to return like a certain value if it's true. So if we're gonna say if this is closed one. So to do that, we type in, so you reference the cell, so we typed in status, and then we're gonna say equal sign, and then a quote, and then closed, dash, dash, one. And we're gonna see if that works. So it's to see if that works, because we're gonna type that second if function in this value two, I'm just gonna type in like 12 in here, and you don't need to put that value two in there yet, but we sure can, so we'll type in 13 for that. So hopefully, Okay, so it's saying that that value is false. So, and it's saying it's false for all of these. So this is gonna be the tutorial. And so for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. So I'm gonna copy the value that I want to be true in there. And instead of typing that in here, because I can tell there's something with those two hyphens right there, I'm gonna say it's that. So now you can see there are some discrepancies between like 12s and 13. So where that's coming from is some of these are saying that this is true where it says that this is actually closed one, it's 12, and if not, it's 13. So for this, we're gonna say, we can put any text in here if we want. So if we put two quotes and then type in between the quotes, we can say this is like, or we can say it's done. So now with this, we're gonna take out this 13 here. So you have your first statement, which is if this field reference right here, which is gonna be dynamic data, equals this static data. And you could also, like, if these two columns are equal, you could do that, but to get this simple, we're just gonna reference this one field here. And then the value of true is this first value after the logical expression. So you type in your logical expression, press the comma key, and then put in what value, if you want it to be true, and then in the value for false, you type in another if function. So now every time this value is false, it's gonna go, okay, now if this value is false, what's gonna be this next function? So if the value is false, we want to test for another thing. So this is gonna be that nested if. So we're gonna type in that status again, and we're gonna say, use the same thing, but we're gonna put loss there. So if that equals close loss, so now I can paste that in there, put another quote around there. And so you can see this function is still contained within this if this first if statement is false. You can see it's still within that value in that first function, but it's completely encapsulated in this new function that's an if function as well that I have highlighted here. So after you type in your logical expression here, which for me is like the status equals this quote and also, if you need help with this, just throw a comment for what your logical expression is, and I can try to help that in the comments. I usually have a pretty fast response time, like within a day or so. So just to give you a little bit more value there, I'll respond to your comments. 
So if that logical expression, comma, and then we're gonna say, if that one is true, we're also gonna say that is done. So now, this is where you can keep going into more and more if functions, and this can get very complicated very fast. But for us, we're just gonna say, end it there, and we're gonna say, I've done. I've showed you how to do that nested if. If you wanted to, you could keep going with these other different like stages of your CRM or whatever you want, and you could keep make, making more and more ifs. But now, since we're in this value of false, it's gonna give us the value of this function. So if the status is now one, oh, and we forgot to change this to lost. So I do want to make sure to change that to lost. So if this status is not closed one or closed lost, then it's going to give us the word open. So hopefully this works out. And yep, so for qualification, qualification, anything besides close lost, close one, we're gonna get the word open here. So I hope this was really useful. If you have questions about that logical expression, go ahead and throw them in the comments. I know there's a lot of ways you can do this with like referencing other fields, so it can get very complicated and I definitely understand your pain there. Also hit subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're finding this content valuable and you want to see more of these Airtable function tutorials and you want more of my help. If you want systems set up for your business, whether on Airtable, Slack, Asana, etc., hit the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. You'll fill out, fill out a short application and pick a time through Calendly. It's a widget in there and you'll get to speak with someone on my team. So without further ado, have a great day and keep watching more Airtable videos.